All right, welcome to How's Your Wine? This is episode 2 episode Barry Sanders. Shout out to the Detroit Lion fan. We got in the building, Jamel Favorite. Hey. What's good? My guy, thank you for having me. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. No doubt, no doubt. So for those of you who don't know Jamel, I'm going to let him introduce himself and then we'll get on with the show. Yeah, man, uh, Nelson, my guy, I appreciate you having me 100%. Um, but my name is Jamel. Uh, I am a podcaster, uh, Roots Fund Scholar, Wine Unify Award recipient. I uh, actually just got uh, another award with Wine Unify. I'll be taking WSAT Level 3 here uh, in 2024. So super excited about that. Hey. Um, yes, sir. Yes, sir. But yeah, so podcaster turns uh, marketing manager at a winery. Um, to start, uh, I was in the hospitality industry working at a hotel um, doing uh, guest relations. So like I was in charge of the front desk staff. I was res- responding to TripAdvisor reviews, like in-house reviews. Uh, then started diving into social media for the company that I worked for, uh, started the Instagram page for um, the hotel that I worked for and just decided like, yo, like, I think there's just like this important aspect of engaging with people online. Uh, and then obviously COVID happened and we had to engage online. So it was crucial to do so. Uh, so started diving into that. Um, then started podcasting, started doing the same thing, started uh, just reaching out to people through DMs, um, saying, yo, like, I love what you're doing. Um, you know, like, we're new in this wine space, yada, yada, yada. And just started, like, building relationships online um, with people in the wine industry. Um, fast forward to 2020, we started the podcast and uh, interviewed the winemaker at the winery that I work at now, which is Modalis Wines. Um, started working there shortly after that interview. Uh, fast forward a little farther. Um, I do marketing full time for them now. So uh, again, just um, using what I've learned through social media, and knowing how important it is to like engage with uh, the person that's commenting on your stuff or sharing your stuff or tagging you in locations, just how important that is to the consumer. Um, so yeah, I'm a podcaster. I'm a marketing manager. Uh, wine lover, um, all the things, big sports head, uh, big hip hop guy. Um, yeah, so I'm all those things. Thank you for having me. <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. This is the show where we're elevating your palate and on IG, you go as Jay Fave. Um, mm-hmm. I think it's important to also know with your podcast, uh, Music in the Bottle podcast, that's blown up like crazy. Yeah, you- yeah. Can you elaborate on just the passion that you have for that? Yeah, um, it it honestly was a passion project, like that was birthed from COVID. Uh, shout out to my uh, co-host and co-founder Daryl. Uh, someone told him that he should start a podcast, and um, we started talking about like, yo, like I'll jump on a podcast with you. We had no idea what it was gonna be about, uh, but we did know that after college we were getting together um hanging out like every month like you know not as frequent as we did in college just due to work but we knew we um wanted to still catch up so we'd grab a bottle of wine catch up over um or have the wine and just catch up on life talk talk music talk family uh just shoot the shit you know so um so yeah uh the the podcast just kind of like was birth um i think randomly i had an idea to like shoot him a text and say, yo, what, how does music in the bottle sound? And we looked, it wasn't out there, like no one had took it. So, you know, we took it and jumped on it and really just started to turn those conversations that we were having just normally with wine uh, into a recorded show. Uh, Nothing really happened with it right away, but then COVID happened and we were able to like really like figure out what the show was going to look like. We had more time. Right. So, um, at, at the time that we started diving into the show, I was still at the hotel. Um, plans started to change a little bit there. Like budgets got, you know, like a little light due to COVID and whatnot. So like my aspirations of being like the social media manager for the hotel just kind of like went to the wayside. Um, and I just kind of like picked up this new passion um, with the podcast. Uh, just 
you know, we started it and, you know, I was able to still do some marketing and some social media through the podcast. So I was still like it, like it advancing my skills in that way. But yeah, it just turned into this like passion project out of COVID, something that, you know, me and him created. Um, and, you know, there's a community here in Michigan, but obviously this big wine community uh, worldwide that we were able to connect with and, you know, get some support for the show. Uh, obviously having a Psalm on episode five, shout out to George Walker for jumping on the show. And then just like, from there, like my curiosity and wine just started to grow. So I went down the rabbit hole that, you know, we all go down like, oh, like, what does this mean? Yeah. What is a sommelier? Like, where, like, Chardonnay, where else is it grown? Napa, what's, what's Napa all about? What's, you know, France all about? What's Burgundy all about? What's Bordeaux? Like, right, you know, right. you just went down that rabbit hole of learning. Um, And I just knew I had to, like, figure something else out. I didn't know what was going to happen Um, with starting the show. Like, I knew that I just needed something to, like, keep my mind off of you know, the day to day job and the stress that, you know, the pandemic brought us. So the podcast was just kind of like that outlet where, you know, like it was something that was mine that I could like, release whatever I wanted, I could say whatever I wanted, not that, you know, we can't anyways, but now you have this outlet that's really yours, kind of like a journal, right? So mm -hmm. I was able to like, just be my authentic self on the show. And uh, yeah, it just started with COVID. And like I said, just going down these rabbit holes and realizing that what was happening with, you know, my day job wasn't going to be able to continue happening. So just trying to like, fulfill like, you know, my soul some way, knowing that this job was draining me, I needed something, even though it wasn't like making money or anything, but it was something that like, still like, kept me going like day to day. And, um, and yeah, that's kind of where the passion just, it, it just kind of like organically like happened. Like I said, I just started reading about wine. I watched Uncorked on Netflix. Like I said, I watched the Psalm documentaries, like all mm -hmm. that. Just like, yo, there's people that look like me in this industry. Like, I think I can be a part of it too. And I can do it like my way. So um, that's where we are. And I'm still recording three years later. So. Close to y'all. I love watching the podcast whenever I get a chance to on some big, some big music convos happen on it. So I want to yeah. ask you, what are you thinking about scary hours three? What's the vibe like if you've already heard it? <laughs> um, so we haven't talked about it on the pod yet. Uh we're going to probably save that for after the holidays, but yeah. um, for people that do want to get my early sneak peek, I'm going to give it to you here on How's Your Wine. Let's go. Um, <laughs> uh, man, I was, I will say I didn't like when I opened Spotify and it was a part of um, For All the Dogs. Uh, so that was like red flag number one for me. <laughs> um, I was like, dang, like I was hoping to see, you know, like the scary hours graphic by itself with the six or seven tracks or whatever. But I'm like, dang, now it's a part of like the album. So now I got to like scroll all the way down. Right, and right. Which songs are new, yada, yada, yada. But uh, the first listen, I was like, man, like, I don't like, like, I don't know. I don't know. Um, And that was like, 12 30 one o'clock i was driving back from detroit at a wine event and uh maybe i was just sleepy or tired but it just wasn't really hitting like that so i listened to it again on the way to work friday morning and uh, i was like all right like okay i'm i'm not mad at it there's a couple tracks on there that i do rock with obviously anything with cole on it For um, sure you know, like I'm the, you know, like I'm a Jermaine Stan. So uh, Evil Ways will stay in rotation. But uh, Drake is just that guy that just knows how to like, if you don't like it right away, I think the more you listen to the project, uh, you're like, okay, like, okay, like, I like that caption. Okay, like, I like that bar. <laughs> and I think he got yeah. them all there. Um, I do think there's some tracks that, you know, will I go back to them right now? Or like, will they be in my rotation? I don't think so. Um, outside of evil ways i think the last one uh the break your heart track is a bop um or you broke my heart or whatever um but overall like i said it's i mean drake ain't really gonna miss too much like i said if you listen to it long enough you're gonna find yourself you know having some of those tracks in rotation or like they'll come back around sooner or later but overall i'm not mad at it like i said the only thing i would have to say is i wish it had its own like ep vibe yeah uh, out out outside of the regular album but 
So if you want to listen to more of Jamel's takes, make sure you go to Music in the Bottle podcast. I know we're going to continue talking more about you, but where can people find Music in the Bottle podcast at? Yeah, so we're based in Grand Rapids. Um, So if you're ever in Michigan, pull up on us. Uh, If you're ever, like I said, coming to the state, like I said, we're on the west side of the state. But if you happen to fly into Detroit and you're in Detroit for some time, um, let us know. Like, we'll pull up on you for free. But if you're also on this side of the state, pull up on us um, in GR. Um, Instagram is our main platform right now for connecting. Uh, so music in the bottle podcast on Instagram. We're on Facebook and Twitter too. I sound like my ad, <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, like I said, if you uh, have any music requests, if you have anything that you want to like share on the show, or even just say, "Yo, like I've been following you guys for forever. Appreciate what you're doing." DM us music in the bottle podcast. Uh, we're hoping to do more events in 2024. So uh, the goal is to, you know, actually, again, like I'm a big relationship, relationship guy, I'm big with engagement. So I want to like see who's really listening and who mm-hmm. really with us. Uh, we did our first event for four for all the dogs. Actually, we did a listening party. Oh. And uh, it was cool to just kind of see people that we knew were going to be there, but also people that you know, maybe hadn't listened to the show or maybe they had, but they hadn't met us yet. So to make those like real life connections was really important. And that's what I want to start doing more in 2024 with the show. So we're hoping to do one event a quarter. I don't know what it really looks like. Maybe it's another listening party. Maybe it's a, maybe it's a dinner. Um, Maybe it's like a silent disco type thing. Maybe it's just a, you know, like a big party, like a, you know, like a, a block party type thing. But I just want to get to know like who's, who's listening and who else we can like one put on the wine, but also put onto the show as a whole, but music in the bottle podcast on Instagram is where you'll find us or find me uh, about 99% of the time. But like I said, if you're in Michigan, pull up on us. We're here. Sure. Speaking of Michigan, uh, when people think of wine, they don't think of Michigan, but uh, one of the things that you're doing with Modalis is making that prevalent. Uh, can you speak to like the challenges that you face, especially as a marketer, uh, that's in the winery and how that relates to people who are in Michigan and outside of Michigan. Yeah, uh, it is, it is very tough. Um, but I think, uh, I think I might've mentioned like relationships earlier. Um, a lot of the stuff that we do in this marketing world or like in this like multimedia world, like you don't really see the ROI right away. It's, it's stuff that happens over time. Um, so like I've been able to work with people in the wine industry, uh, including yourself, like just getting the wine that we have to uh, like my friends, like dope people in the industry. And it's not something that like, again, like you're not going to see the return like the next day or not even the next week or maybe even not until a year later, you know? So like a lot of this stuff happens behind the scenes that I do. And I like, I move and shake and I get wine to people. Like I have connections. I'm grateful for the connections that I've been able to make in the industry, you know, shout out to wine unify and the roots fund. I've been able to, you know, have access to so many people that, you know, know so many other people. And I kind of utilize that with my day job at Modalis to, you know, say, Hey, like I can, like I've had a conversation through DMs with um uh um Dorothy um and John Brecher, uh Dottie and John, uh who did the tasting column for the Wall Street Journal for 12 plus years and are now like senior writers. I read their book. Um so to just like know that these these people are human just like me and they're just a email or a text or a DM away uh, to make things happen. Um, Going to places and bringing a bottle of Modalis just to share with people. I got a bottle in front of Madeline Paquette uh, in New York for like the Roots Fund Gala year one and just like things like that. So like being able to uh, like step into these rooms and, you know, put myself out there. Like, again, it is Michigan wine, but I'm just saying, hey, try this juice. Um, if you like it and you respond back, cool. If not, but it's just like that relationship game where I'm just like, hey, I'm going to drop this off here. Like, like, it's almost like 
I'm not an artist by any means, but like, you know, like you're trying to drop off your demo to, you know, the producer or, you know, the recording label, like it's like, I take it as that. And I do that so many times. And, you know, like if you do it 20 times, someone's going to respond and you mm-hmm. either say your wine sucks or your album sucks, <laughs> but at least you got a response and then you just keep moving from there. Uh, so I've been able to like get more comfortable with, um, just kind of like spreading the word of what we're doing at Modalis. And obviously like the juice like speaks, speaks for itself. Like I just have to get out there and like, you know, say, you know, just, just the smallest pieces um, to help um, like boost the juice a little bit more. Like the juice is already good, but the words that I say, just kind of give it that, like that um, kind, kind of uh, gives it that elevation that it needs for, you know, the person that was skeptical on Michigan wine. So I've been able to, you know, like, I feel like this has been my first year where I've I've been starting to see a little bit of that ROI. And like I said, it's still not coming on the bottom line, but it's coming with the relationships and connections that I've been able to make. Um, And I think the more that that happens, the more that, you know, we will see the, uh, you know, like that bottom line, like increase and we'll get the revenue that we need for said product or get in front of, you know, you know, the said publication or, you know, so it's all like a long game. And I just feel like I've been able to, you know, say, Hey, like Michigan juice is here to stay. Like, you know, we're not, we're not trying to be California. We're not trying to be Burgundy. We're not trying to be this or that. But if you look at climate and what some of these regions, um, like what the climate is in some of these other regions, um, like Germany and Alsace and places like the Mosul, like I said, Alsace, France, like we're making wines that are similar in climate and, if we can grow those same grapes here, then they should have some similarities to some of the wines that we love from the regions all all across the world. So I'm able to like provide those um, parallels to other regions, but uh, it is tough. It is tough. Like I said, you go in it day by day, like you, you know, you drop a sample off to a restaurant or a retailer and, you know, you hope it goes well, but again, you keep, you know, you come back next week. Hey, like, bring something else, you know? So it's all a long game at the end of the day, but I feel like I've been able to get in my zone a little bit and feel comfortable with uh, what we're doing here in Michigan, because there are some, there, there are some really cool things happening. Uh, The producers are becoming a little bit more free. Like they're able to grow what they want. They're able to play around with different varietals. So um, it's fun to just kind of be the, you know, the plug for some of that stuff. For sure. Now, speaking of the plug, <laughs> my Michigan Pet Nap plug. He hey. actually speak to this bottle. Huh? This is the Pet Nap, as I mentioned just yeah. a minute ago. Speak to the It Is What It Is bottle. My guy, I appreciate yes. the uh, the Wine Wednesday. That was that was fire. No that was fire. Thank you. Thank you for that. But yeah, the Pet Nap um, es lo que es uh, means it is what it is. Um, we find ourselves saying that quite often in the winery, especially the winemaker, like it's just like shit happens and it is what it is, right? Um, moving to the wine in specific, the grape, 100% Vidal Blanc, which is a hybrid grape, we have that on our estate. Uh, it's a grape that doesn't really fit like this mold for like, I think the vinifera that we have. So it's always hard to place it like in our portfolio so this past vintage 2022 uh we did the uh, pet nat sparkling we also did a skin contact um amber wine uh so just finding like ways that we can utilize that grape if we're not going to make ice wine with it which is what it's primarily known for um and with that i think the winemaker is just like eh, like i don't know what's going to happen so it is what it is <laughs> and uh um, hey. And it finally made it to the label with the pet nat. Uh, so we just kind of like leaned into just a daily mantra <laughs> um, at the winery. But speaking on that bottle, that's kind of like my baby. I think I might have told you when I gifted it to you, but I, you know, I, I kind of had a hand in like the artwork. Um, you know, we play around with the artists community that were uh, near in Michigan and uh we have access to artists we have access to artwork and the winemaker was like hey like let's see if we can get some artwork on this pet nap bottle and i was like all right cool uh 
thinking that I know I had a timeline to like get the label in the works and get it to a label company. I was like, so if I reach out to an artist, that means I have to decide what their rate is to use the artwork. No, and I don't really have like a large budget for artwork. I got to see if they're okay with wine trade, which I'm cool with that. Um, there was just a lot of moving parts. And also, unfortunately for this wine, none of the art really spoke to me. So I was like, all right, well, I don't want to just like pick something like just to have it. Like I really want it to be a uh, art piece that we all enjoy um, at the winery. I mean, me and the winemaker for sure, since we're the one in the process. And I, you know, I was like, all right, we're running low on time. Let me check my camera roll. Um, I think I might have a photo that I can play around with it at least to, you know, get my creative juices flowing. Right. So I had this picture of my on my phone um, with the sparkling bottles like in the cages. And I was like, yo, this is kind of a dope picture. Um, played around with an effect on it, which is what uh, essentially made it to the actual label. And we had this idea to use like the old English text and we played around with the parental advisory before. So it was really a collaboration between me and the winemaker. But again, the photo that made it to the label was something that that I literally took on my iPhone 12. Um, so, uh, and then the back, uh, I think I had just drank a bottle from South Africa that had a QR code that went to a playlist or I had saw something. Um, and I was like, let's do the same thing. So we put a QR code on it, created a playlist for Spotify, uh, and just threw some, just threw some random tracks on there. It is what it is. Like I said, there's no yeah. like reason, but um when i drink the wine and i hear something then i'm like oh it's going on the playlist so it, there's there's still songs getting added to it um you know weekly potentially or you know like just whenever something sparks like oh that feels like the pet mat for me so i'm gonna pop it on the playlist but um but yeah so it's kind of been like my kind of like like my first like true label design and I remember sending over like the draft to the winemaker and like, I didn't hear nothing bad. So I was like, Oh, so I think we might actually get this. Yeah. Like he didn't say nothing. So (laughs) his all systems go from there. (laughs) Yeah. So I know it's Monday night, uh, Monday night football is going on right now. Uh, We got a big game between my Cowboys and your lions in a couple weeks. What are your thoughts on just the Lions this year and their resurgence? Because it's been a, it's been a few decades since they were like really, <laughs> really hype in the NFC. Yeah, man, um, it's been a good year, and it's still kind of like a shock. I mean, like, granted, I'm not like the like the diehard fan, but I feel like if you live in Michigan or even if you're a football fan, like you grew up, you know, potentially watching football on Sundays, watching the Lions lose, um, you know, you you know, you've seen the calls, you know, when we, you know, quote unquote, even played the Cowboys and there's some calls out there. You know, there's some, you know, there's some things that happen, you know, there's some things that happen to the lions that I feel like don't happen to nobody else. So like, we all been there. We've all seen the lions like suffer. Um, But to uh, like, kind of go through that, like, I remember vaguely, like after church, like getting home, mom's cooking dinner, like the Lions are on, we're watching the game, like just just to have it on because the Lions are playing at one or, you know, whatever. And seeing them lose, obviously, thanks, thanks, Thanksgiving is always tough. Um, you know, we always find a way to muck it up on Thanksgiving. Uh, but I'm very, like, happy for not only, like, myself as a fan, but I think, like, the state of Michigan, like, deserves, like, the resurgence that the Lions uh, have. And it all starts up front, I think. Obviously, um, Dan Campbell, um, Holmes, uh, you know, like, everybody in that office, you know, that, you know, like, is really, like, hey, like, believe in me. Believe in us. We're going to get shit done. Um, and, you know, I think there's still work to do, but I think that this is a team that's, you know, have like, they've gone through the mud, like they've gone through the fire and now they're like, okay, like we can really do this. And it does help that, you know, uh, you know, our guy, Aaron is out of the North. Um, so we don't yeah. got to worry about Aaron anymore. Uh, the bears are going through a little dip, 
um, in their program. And I think the Vikings are always suspect. So, um, you know, like we may not have all the pieces or we didn't have all the pieces, but I think like watching them play, like, I think they knew that, Hey, like it's up for grabs and somebody mm-hmm. got to take it and why not us? Uh, so it's been cool to watch. I mean, eight, I didn't think, the lions would ever be eight and two in my lifetime Uh, so um you know we just drinking the kool-aid the kool-aid has been tasting real good this year you know it you know it got a little sour last year you know we had some chances to make a little run and it was tasting good you know through the season and then you know it got a little sour but so far it's pretty good and the team is just gelling and i'm happy to see it um i'm actually going to the game on christmas eve when they play the vikings and minnesota so, so uh super excited for that um and yeah like i said i mean they just gotta you know just keep playing with the intensity that they're playing at because you know all these games can kind of be trap games like you still got to bring mm-hmm. it like, you know like thanksgiving is a game that you know is still tough like we're playing the packers so we gotta we still gotta come with it the Broncos are looking a little nice over these last few weeks. We play them in December too. So, you know, there's all these games that, you know, you think you can let up and, you know, take a couple breaks or take, take a Sunday off, but now you got to keep it up. So, so we'll see what happens, but I'm happy right now. <laughs> sure. All right. We'll leave out on this. You have again, the music in the bottle podcast, the guest list that y'all had has been, excuse me, phenomenal. Going into 2024, you don't have to spill any beans right now. But if you had four dream guests to be on the podcast, who would they be? Ah, man. Um, I think I got to start and say that a goal has always been to get D-Wade on the podcast. Uh, Dwayne Wade is one of the reasons I'm in the industry right now. Um, you know, seeing him mellow, um, CP3 and Braun, like toast with a glass of red wine on vacation, uh, was like my first kind of like picture that was like, yo, there's people that I respect in the league that are drinking wine. And then, you know, you, again, you go down this rabbit hole. Oh, Wade actually has a wine brand. How do I get my hands on some of this wine? And, you know, with him being my favorite player, um, getting the chance to meet him, um, a couple of years ago, um, in LA uh was you know just like okay got to meet him i also am very close with you know the band ambassador for wade sellers george so 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 if i'm here george is here wade's here i've actually already met him so that means it's you know like it's gonna happen at some point but uh 20 2024 would be a dope uh time to get him on the show uh, keeping it in the league, I would say uh, CJ McCollum is another big fan of mine. Another reason why I'm in the wine. Uh, I started listening to, listening to his podcast, and uh, he would have a wine segment on there. And just knowing how involved he is, especially now in the wine world, mm-hmm. uh, just knowing that he's one of those guys that like went to a small college and like can really like hoop like for real, for real. So like seeing um, CJ do his thing, I would love to talk wine. I would love to talk podcasting stuff just to you know get his like insight into the media world those would probably be two for sure um jermaine stone of the wine and hip-hop show we got the chance to talk with him at the roots fun auction gala um this past year and it was just kind of like that like that synergy like okay like game recognized game you know so it would be cool to actually like plan something whether that's in person or virtual um ideally i would love it to be in person whether right. you know you know he pops up in the midwest or we pop up in new york again but i would love to sit down and do a collab with jermaine um and then lastly i would say everyone that's on the podcast really is a dream guest because they bring like this but like they get to tell their story and i have the platform to share it uh, so like every guest that we have on the show, like is very monumental to me in general. So whoever that person is, um, whether it's a Roots Fund scholar, whether it's someone from Wine Unify, someone on the board of one of those organizations, if it's another producer here in Michigan, you know, like whoever that person is, like, I think like all of my guests are important. And uh, I love just having the access to um, or have this platform to share 
uh, not only my story and be my authentic self, but having um, whoever that guest is uh, pop up on the show. And I know we'll have multiple guests like that in 2024. But again, if I had to pick my dreams, like I said, D D Wade is number one. Uh, Jermaine Stone is up there and CJ McCollum are probably my three. And then, like I said, all my guests are, like I said, dream guests, because I'm happy that people take the time to join us on the show. But also, um, I'm happy that we have a platform for them to share their uh, stories. That's real, man. Well, we got to tune in to Music in the Bottle podcast. If you aren't subscribed to it yet, definitely make that move ASAP. You can follow uh, yeah. Jamel also on IG. Uh, at jfav is that correct yes j underscore fav it's not really a wine page but i'd be like you know collaborating with my accounts um on there <laughs> so, so yeah so j underscore fave is the page music in the bottle podcast on instagram also check out modalis wines on instagram too. For sure, ski. make sure you do that everything is popping 2024 is going to be crazy for jamel and his squad so Make sure you stay tuned to what he's got cooking up. But my bro. I'm excited for you too, man. I'm excited for you too. And how's your wine? You're doing your thing over there too. And I uh, love that, you know, like I was able to have the opportunity to kind of lead a class through the Roots Fund and to see that you decided to turn this into, you know, like this, you know, like the streaming thing that it that does live on Spotify or Apple. So kudos to you, man. Um, I'm proud of what you're doing. Uh this is an honor um again like we'll get you on music in the bottle too so you know Appreciate that. call is coming hey call man <laughs> i'm gonna make sure my ring my ringtone gonna be live for that don't you worry <laughs> don't you worry but man cheers thank you for taking the time out this evening we'll make sure that this is posted for y'all to enjoy during the holiday season and into 2024 so my bro jamel cheers cheers my guy Yes, sir.